Hi, I'm Mike Haddock, and today we're going to do part four of rock facing and shaping stones. But we're going to go back in time a little bit. I showed you Godino's quarry up there, just some pictures. But we're going to go into some old quarries that closed around 1950 or so. And we're going to get in there, and I wanted to get in those quarries before the leaves got on the trees and the rattlesnakes got out. So we're going to go in there first. We're going to take a look at the quarries. I'm going to do some uh, demonstrations and all the old timer use some tools. We're going to look at some railroad uh, work and how they took them stones from the quarry and put them into railroad bridges, etc. A couple churches. So here we go. We're going to look at the first quarry. Well, today I am in an old abandoned rock quarry and it's off the turnpike, the northeastern extension in northeastern Pennsylvania. Let's just look at it. They, was, they were working as quarries up until about 1950 when they put the turnpike in. There's the turnpike right there. And they cut right through the center of the quarry. And I, as the legend goes, they had a big lawsuit about that because the owner had abandoned it. He couldn't get his workers here. But they did a lot of the old railroad bridges and tunnels and everything out of this quarry. So. We're going to take a look at it. We're looking at the top of the quarry, and that's like a conglomerate. But it's all very, very straight. So they seam it off. Same thing up there, that's a different color stone. See how flat and square it is? They, they get it off of there, they bring it down, they face it. They had a railroad track here at one time. Let's go over and look at some of these stones. So here's some of the red, red that they would use. See how they have the flat face? You get over here, some of it's flat. Look at this one. A flat face. From the, yeah. From the top they got conglomerate. You can see the conglomerate over here. They got the flat face on it. And they take that stone and they work it. Again, looking at the quarry. Here's a couple of these big stones that they would use like on the railroad tracks. And they'd have guys here just constantly working the stone and they pulled different types of stone out of this quarry. They also pulled the conglomerate. Now you can see the huge stones up there and how they're all straight and you come down to the bottom of the quarry and you can actually look at all these conglomerate pieces just like that right there. Look at how, how flat that is. And that's an easy, easy stone to work. You flat on both sides. Over here, it's seamed. So when they got into these big quarries, see how flat they are? You can see how flat they are, some of them. Again, these huge stones that they used for the railroads. All you had to do was face it off. Here's a couple more huge stones. Let's take a look at them. Again, look at how flat that stone is. Then you come up here. Look at how nice and flat that stone is. All you got to do is the edges. You get up there, there's even bigger ones up there. But look at the huge size of these stones. You can could, you could just look at the, how big they are by the guy up there waving. They came all the way from up at the top. And they're all down here and just sift through them. You pick your best stones and you deliver them and then they put them in. Here's some of the leftover stone. It's not grade A, but you can see where it's kind of square and flat and then you can see the rest of the quarry here. We're on the other side of the turnpike, but there's the quarry over here. And then we come over here, and they cut through the quarry. That's the end of it. You're gonna ask me, Mike, what kind of stone did they quarry there, and what did they use it for? So we're gonna go up here to these bridges, and we're gonna take a look. So we're walking up to these old railroad bridges, and if you remember, the conglomerate at the top of the quarry. There it is, and it's faced. And then you get to see the other stones they had at the quarry. And if you remember, when they did these stones back in Scranton, on the Scranton Municipal Building in the fire company, they did the same thing. And they just made arches out of it, and then filled the centers in. Really neat job. This has been here I don't know, a hundred years or so. And I'm gonna tell you something. It's gonna be here another couple hundred years. If this is concrete, sooner or later the whole thing would fall apart. 
Well, look at the work they put into it. See, they put smaller ones, bigger ones, littler ones. As long as they could form the arch, that's the only thing that mattered. I want to point out something. There's the arch. And you go over here and you see these stones laying in the water. Well, that's exactly how they made them. They weren't all perfect. They just had to see they're, they're chipped on the ends, just like Machu Picchu. They didn't make them all perfect. They came from up in here. The wall was going this way, and the frost and that pushed them off. But that's a good idea to see how they were made. Now that bridge that we were looking at, that tunnel bridge, that was only about a quarter mile away from that quarry. And just looking at them stones, if I was a detective, I'd say them stones came right from that quarry because you could see the different types in there. Now when I was a little kid, we used to go to the quarries and I remember them old guys still doing that stuff and you'd order a set of steps, they'd make it at the quarry, pre-made, and then you'd take it to the job site. Same thing with the churches. When they ordered stone from a quarry for them churches, all that stone was pre-made at the quarries. And then they would deliver it, and then they fine-tune it on site when they built it. So now we're going to go to the second quarry, and uh, I'm going to do a little demonstration there. And then we'll do a little demonstration with the tools. Today we're here at another old abandoned quarry. Maybe it lasted until about the 1950s. So this is the bottom of the quarry, and it's a field. And if you look around the field, the reason the trees are growing over here is because as they quarried the stone, all the junk they would push that way. You see what I mean? Now over there in that quarry, you got different stone than you do when you come over in this quarry. And we go up there and we look, and we could see, and then you get over here, so you had different color stones at different parts of the quarry. So as you get down here in the bottom, this is like the remnants of what was left before they abandoned it. So they took all the good stuff. The only thing left is some junk. Now like I said, this is all the junk laying on the bottom from years gone by. But we got one good piece left here. So let's do a little rock facing on that. Now this stone looks good like this. I can't lift these up no more. But uh, we got a face. We can either have the face on this side or this side. So it's just, just kind of big enough where I can move it around because I can't move these stones no more. So we got a good, so we know maybe it has to be squared that way, maybe that way. And maybe we're going to chip it off. So we're going to start here in the corner. And I got, I had to climb up the mountain here. So I got the, I brought the big hammer. So that's it. We got a good corner there. That's pretty good, square there. Now if I was going to square this for real, I'd have a pattern on it. You get the idea. So that's almost square. This is a stone we could use in one of the churches. See that? Not too bad. Now, we're going to square the stone this way. If you can see that, we're going to work it this way. Too bad. I'm gonna go over here. Good. Now let's tip it up on the side. Okay. 
Maybe I could just flip it around, I don't know. Not too bad. Let's see if I can adjust the camera. Not too bad. Now the top's a little high. So. And then, if you wanted to take this top down, we got to go piece by piece and keep taking it back like this. Now these old old guys be working this stone for hours, but every stone that left this quarry was ready to go in the wall. They didn't just bring a bunch of stone and then they chipped it on site. They did everything at the quarry, and they're pretty good. Like I said, this is a piece of junk compared to the good stone they took out of here. But you can see what I'm doing. Now except for the top. Also a lot of times if I could switch this around a lot of times see this is almost square this is my favorite hammer it's flat and it's pointed see that just takes it right out no big deal and a lot of them you just use the hammer depending on how good you are Remember I told you the chisel, flat cuts straight down, point it doesn't. That's it. You get the idea. See that's a little loose. Let me get that up. No big deal. So now we got our stone, which could almost go in as a corner. We're walking up to a old railroad bridge. And these stones are big. But they're really not that big. See, it's not that much bigger than what I was chipping on. And what they do is they chip them all. And here you can see where they're, they're drilling in here to break them away. And they face them. And then they put it all together. And it's all different kinds of stone. But this is going to be here maybe three, four hundred years from now. Now we're back at St. John's in Pittston, Pennsylvania. USA and we're going to go over there and we're going to look at how them stones fit into the side. So we're going to walk across the street and we're going to look at these faced stones. This cornerstone 1854 but this church was probably built 1889 or finished. And as we're looking at it you see they're faced and they can leave big parts out or little parts as long as there's cement joints. As long as there's cement joints all kind of match you're okay. You see what I mean? Square the stone off. This is about as big, or that's probably about as big as the stone I was beating on. But you can beat them on with big hammers. You got your limestone and then you just continue up. Little pieces like that. Bigger pieces, other pieces. This is one of my favorite churches. It's in West Pittston at the end of Route 92 or Jason's 11 near the Susquehanna River. It's one of my favorite churches, but I want to point a couple things out to you. First of all, when we're walking up to it, see, it's really, they're all square stones, but at the same time, they're all random. And when we walk up to it, we could see, like, we have this little drop off. And you see the same thing, how they did that perfect, and then they went in, and you got your corners all the way up. But the whole front of the church is perfect. You know, they have all different size stones. Some of them are like four inches. Some of them are a foot and a half. Uh, different style. Now let's go look at the top. Stones are still good in the bottom. They got the big ones, they got the little ones. But then when you get to the top, they're all small pieces. Why was that? And then you get over on this side, the dog's barking at me. 
And the same thing, they're all small pieces. Why is that? They are running out of stone, that's why. All this stone was done at the quarry and they brought it here. And that's all the pieces they had to do at the end. Now let's say I was going to start a rock quarry like they did years ago. What I would do is I'd go into the woods, which they did, and they'd look for seamed rocks like this. Because once you get your seams, you already have a start. So let's just take a look at this natural place that I would start a quarry. Now look at this. This is all natural, all up and through here. And right here they have some big pieces that are already loose. See how they are? They're loose already? They're already broken away. This is a good place to start a quarry for this kind of stone. We're looking at it. These stones are kind of naturally loose already. And you can see the seams in them. So if we wanted to get this stone up, this would be easy. And if we wanted to start cutting into these seams, it would be easy. So let's say I wanted to start quarrying rock. I found a good outcrop here. This is what they do in the old days. And you start with your wedges. See, you got thin wedges. And you drive the wedges in. Your first stone. Boom. Boom. See, that's loose already. Now, when you go into the next one and you want to go deeper and get bigger stones, you drive a wedge here, 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 and you keep going, and a stone lifts up. Then when you get it so high, you can knock the backs off. That's how you would start a quarry. Now, let's say we're flattening this stone out, because the next stone's got to lay on top of it. We got what we call point chisels. See the points on them? They're point chisels. The old timers would work a stone. Let's just say we're going to get that little piece out. We work it. See? We work it and we get the top of that stone off like that. That's a point chisel. Now the old timers, when they were serious, they wanted to do it big time. They used this little gizmo. And one guy would be holding the chisel like that at a distance and the other guy would be pounding with the big sledgehammers. But that's a point chisel and that's how we would level the top of a stone. Comprende? See, and you keep working it. You go from this way, that way, sooner or later that piece will come off. See? And you can keep going in with it. Just like that. Now when I was a kid and I was working with these old timers, all this stuff, when they ripped concrete out, they did it by hand. They used these uh, chisels, all kind of chisels. They still have them in the garage. What they would do also was, everybody was a miner. Back in the 50s, I still remember the mines going on. You could hear them working underneath. They'd come home with uh, lunch boxes full of dynamite. If uh, they wanted to loosen something up, like the WPA area, they put a quarter stick of dynamite in it, boom, it loosened it all up. Then they go in with their wedges, they take their stone out, and that's what they would be building the walls with. Now if you did that, you'd have the CIA, the FBI, you'd have fire trucks, state police, helicopters flying over. It'd be like uh, you were a terrorist or something. But that's the way it was in the old days. Everything was done by hand, and I still remember the end of all of that. Now it's diamond saws, things are changing. They got hydraulic uh, stuff they're running around the quarries with. But I just wanted to turn you on to this stuff. It's still, you know, still a lot of them old countries. You still see them doing the old school stuff. Next thing we're going to get into, uh, actually, how they built these castles. We're going to start put the stones together. I'm going to show you how they did that, how they built these old churches. I want to finish the video with this. There have been a lot of quarries around the world, and every farmer in our area at one time had their own little quarry. You could get stone for almost nothing. But I was over in Egypt. I was at the quarry of the unfinished obelisk. You've seen that. And uh, the quarry where they took the stone out and put it in the pyramids, plus all my Peru videos. And I can't keep making this point because you don't need any kind of special tool to cut anything. All you need is a harder rock. This is granite. So if I wanted to, you know, just 
chip it with granite, I can do that. It's not a big deal. Everybody thinks it's a big deal. They don't know how they did it in Egypt. Then you could take the granite and you could like a piece of sandpaper or a file. File it down to what you want. So that was never a big deal. Same thing when you get to marble. Same thing. You could you could cut that with another stone. It's not a big deal. All these bedroom archaeologists are telling you this and that. But it's not a big deal. All you gotta do is keep working it, working it, and you'll get exactly what you want. So I want to end the video with that. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike Haddock. Until next video.